Let's talk about the relationship between force and momentum. So it starts with Newton's second law. F net equals the mass of whatever object we're talking about multiplied by its acceleration. Well, the acceleration is the rate of change in the velocity. So if I just use the calculus notation here, that's dv dt. If you like, you could just use delta v over delta t. And then I realized that, that as long as the mass of the object is constant, which is usually true for us, I can move it inside the derivative, and I get the time rate of change of the mass times the velocity. And of course, the mass times the velocity is the momentum. So we can rephrase Newton's second law as F net equals the time rate of change of the momentum. And in upper division mechanics classes, this is actually how you start out. You don't even say MA, you say F net equals DP dt. All right, a lot of the applications that we're going to see will have a constant force, or we could even talk about the average force over a finite amount of time. So I want to rephrase it using that notation, or I could say for a finite amount of time, F average nets is going to be a delta P over delta T. And a quick reminder here, delta P is what we call the impulse. So one of the ways that we use this reformulation of Newton's second law is to answer questions about the average force experienced by something during a collision. So let's see if we can get in an example of how to use it. Okay, so here's our example. I have a ball running into a wall and bouncing off of it. And on the way in, the ball is moving at 4 meters per second to the right. And on the way out, the ball is moving at 3 meters per second to the left. One interesting thing to note here is that clearly some energy has been lost in the bounce, which is natural for a bouncy ball. And I'm told that the time for the collision is 0 0.2 seconds. And I want to find the average force experienced by the ball as it's turning around. Now, clearly the ball is experiencing a leftward force. Um, it was moving to the right. And at some point in between, it got stopped completely, which means the acceleration must have been pointing to the left, which means the force is pointing to the left. Likewise, it bounces off the wall and ends up moving to the left, which means it must have been accelerating to the left even more which means there's a force pointing to the left. So we're talking here about a leftward pointing force that caused the ball to stop and then turn around. So how do you get it with this new tool? F average is delta P over delta T. I've got to get the impulse first, which means I need to get the momenta first. So my initial momentum is MV initial, and that's one kilogram times four meters per second positive. So I get four kilogram meters per second. I'm going to put a plus sign on that just as a reminder that this is a vector quantity and we're using the signs to indicate direction. P final, MV final. That's one kilogram times negative three meters per second or negative three kilogram meters per second. So what's delta P? It's always final minus initial, so P final minus P initial. That gives me a negative 3 kilogram meters per second minus P initial, which is 4 kilogram meters per second, which gives me a negative 7 kilogram meters per second. So the initial momentum pointed to the right. And then my change in momentum is very large and points to the left, and it results in a final momentum pointing to the left. Let's find our average force. F average is delta P over delta T. And this is a little funky here. I need to indicate that it's an average and that it's a vector, so there's a vector hat over the bar. I suppose I should change that in my initial, initial question as well. 
and I get a delta P of negative 7 kilogram meters for, per second and a delta T of 0 0.2 seconds. And so that gives me negative 35 kilogram meters per second squared. And you should recognize that unit, I hope. I have units of mass multiplied by units of acceleration, which if I go, if I go all the way back to N2, reminds me that a kilogram meter per second squared is a Newton. All right, so there's my leftward pointing force on average to turn this thing around.